welcome the, uh, getting to 120 people. Uh, this is the monthly CIFAR webinar that we have at least half of the months. Um, and the goal of the CIFAR webinar was to try to have a forum where we could advertise or engage people across all of the CIFARs. And today's is a little bit of a funny one because we're engaging a group that's also doing that. And so I think our job with this seminar platform is just to make sure everybody in the CIFARs who might know about it can find out about it, who, who needs to know about it, can find out about it because this group is gonna uh, is, is going to take off and, and manage their own outreach just fine without us. So today is this kind of special way of making sure everybody who is interested in the implementation science group uh, knows about it and gets engaged and they'll take care of all of it going forward as they have been already. So this is uh, the implementation science coordination consultation and collaboration initiative, um, the ISC3I, which I believe is, correct me if I'm wrong, but is ISCI, uh, which e easy to pronounce. And it's, so it's five affiliated uh, implementation science consultation hubs that are brought together, been now in their, I guess, second full year um, to really provide, uh, coordinate implementation science technical assistance among the CFARs and the ARC groups supplemental projects that are funded through the EHE initiative to create opportunities to produce generalizable knowledge for the local from the local knowledge generated through the supplement projects. Um, so the they set up these five consultation hubs as teams, which is what you're going to hear about today and how to access them and what type of expertise they can provide in, in the area of implementation science. So to me, it's a real exciting thing. Um, a number of people have been, been involved, but uh, someone who's, whose leadership in all of this really stands out is Brian Nastansky, and I'm happy to turn it over to him. Brian? Yeah, thanks for organizing this, and we're happy to have the opportunity to talk to you a little bit today about um, the implementation science supports that NIH is um, providing as part of the Ending the Epidemic initiative. I'm Brian Nastansky. I co-lead the um, ISTKI initiative with Nanette Benbow. And I'm gonna start by just giving a little bit of a history of the implementation science work and um, interest for our working group collaboration that got us to the point that we're out today. Um, and then we're gonna hear from Nanette, who's gonna talk a little bit about um, what we've learned from the first year of the EHE supported supplements, as well as some of the data that we've collected that describes a little bit about the projects that have been funded in the second cycle. And, um, after that, we're gonna hear from each of the hubs. We're gonna give a brief presentation of some of the activities that they have going on in their hubs. And really the spirit of this is to help um, inform the larger uh, HIV research community about some of the supports and resources that are available as you um, conduct implementation science activities. Uh, and so we hope this is a real opportunity to kind of onboard you to those um, services and, and opportunities. Next slide, Brennan. So um, the ISCI and the um, hubs really grew out of an uh, inter-CIFAR implementation science working group. Um, if you're connected to CIFARs, you know that from time to time, uh, inter-CIFAR working groups form focused on particular um, um, cross-cutting issues that span particular CIFARs, really with the opportunity to share learning and share knowledge across CIFARs, leverage resources um, within one CIFAR that uh, may be stronger or weaker at other CIFARs that working together um, can really um, create um, some synergy and opportunities. So in 2018, um, the Third Coast CIFAR, myself and Annette, uh, worked with uh, CIFAR at Johns Hopkins um, to apply for a supplement to host a meeting focused on the state of the science uh, around HIV implementation science. And the goal of that meeting was really to start to bring together stakeholders, CIFAR leaders, um, uh, members from federal agencies, community organizations to really take stock of the field of HIV implementation science, get a sense of where it stood and um, what resources um, and supports might be needed to really catalyze the use of implementation science as an approach to advance um, HIV. 
Um, we formed a steering committee, which had 23 members from nine CFARs, three federal agencies, uh, as well as a representative from a foundation. Um, we formed an executive committee. And as I said, it was initially supported through um, a CFAR meeting supplement, but the work of the Inter-CFAR Working Group has continued to be supported um, through a supplement to ISCI, um, as well as the Third Coast CFAR hosts uh, a lot of the resources that have come out of that Inter-CFAR Working Group to make them publicly available. Next slide. Um, the, the focus of the Inter-CFAR Working Group is really to advance training in HIV implementation science. From our formative work, we realized that there were significant needs to train the field around um, the methods, measures, frameworks uh, of implementation science and um, create lines of communication between implementation science and HIV researchers. Um, and so we identified training as an important initiative. Um, Cherise Schwartz at Johns Hopkins has received two rounds of supplements now to support a training institute at Johns Hopkins focused on um, training early career researchers in HIV implementation science. Um, we've also done a lot around creating tools to disseminate information about HIV implementation science. As I mentioned, most of those tools are hosted on the Third Coast um, CIFAR website. So if you go to the th Third Coast CIFAR website, you can find a lot of those public facing tools, including recordings of webinars um, in particular. We've also identified opportunities to convene HIV implementation researchers, as well as those that deliver services, that fund services, that fund research to exchange knowledge, develop, um, identify gaps, develop new methods, and forge collaborations. And so we did that through hosting a summit, um, our initial meeting in Chicago, and then a kickoff meeting for EHE also in Chicago. And we're happy to say that the DCC FAR is gonna be hosting um, the next version, the next iteration of that. Um, convening um, this, this calendar year and identify um, opportunities for infrastructure that could really support nimble, cost-effective, high-impact HIV implementation science through collaborations across CFARs. Next slide. Um, ISCI was an outgrowth of um, the Inter-CFAR Working Group. ISCI is the Implementation Science Coordination, Consultation, and Collaboration Initiative, which really focused domestically on the application of HIV implementation science to the Ending the Epidemic Initiative within the United States. Um, it's co-led by myself and Annette Benbow and has a number of um, implementation scientists, Hendricks Brown, Dennis Lee, J.D. Smith, Juan BMR, that are um, um, involved in ISCI and help sort of identify trainings, resources, consultants um, to apply uh, to the work of the Ending the Epidemic Initiative. And we're also staffed with individuals that are supporting some of the um, new activities um, in the second year of ISCI, which I'll get into in a second. Next slide. The overarching goal of the ISCI initiative is to support high quality implementation science in the funded Ending the HIV Epidemic projects by providing technical assistance from experts on IS designs, frameworks, strategies, measures, and outcomes, as well as to create opportunities to develop generalizable knowledge from the local knowledge that's learned from each particular project. And you can see this illustration on the left really talks about the, um, illustrates the connection between implementation practice and what's learned locally and how that can be translated into generalizable knowledge when we apply implementation research frameworks and methods to um, that local knowledge. And so that's a big focus of our work is to really create opportunities for learning what's happening across each of these projects to synthesize the knowledge and create generalizable knowledge. Next slide. In the first year of the EHE supplements, there were 65 projects. You can see on this map, the distributions of those projects within the jurisdictions that were selected for um, EH to be part of the first phase of the Ending the Epidemic initiative. And while you can see the projects are um, colored by their primary pillar, many of the projects actually um, focused on multiple pillars that are part of the Ending the Epidemic Initiative. And you can see the um, overlay of where the CFARs and um, ARCs are located uh, really overlays where those Ending the Epidemic Initiative projects are taking place. Although many of the um, centers also uh, were working on projects that were outside of the um, geographic boundaries of their own particular CFARs. So for example, you can see the project taking place in Puerto Rico, for example. Next slide. Um, as I mentioned, we um, kicked off in year one a summit 
um, that did a lot of onboarding to um, the teams to some fundamental principles of implementation science and then gave examples of how to apply those principles in the HIV research world. All of those webinars from the kickoff meeting are available on the ISCI website publicly. So if you wanna watch those um, webinars, I think it's a great way to get a nice introduction to different concepts of implementation science, um, concepts around measurement, frameworks, phases of implementation, some of the core methods that are, that are widely used in implementation <laughs> science. Um, I really recommend going and, and watching some of those webinars, some of those um, recordings of that summit. Next slide. In addition, uh, um, the Community of Practice is a website that we created uh, at isgi.isgem.northwestern.edu um, that has a lot of resources. Many of these resources are publicly available. And then some of those are also available behind a password protected page, page um, for uh, particular projects, teams that are funded as part of the EHE supplements. We're happy to make access to those that password protected material available to all of your projects. So um, you can just reach, you can just email us at iski at northwestern.edu if you or your member of your team um, are part of an EHE funded project and would like access to those resources. But you can see recordings of um, prior webinars. We have PDFs of articles that we see as key readings in HIV implementation science. We post um, some of our, our suggested measures, for example, to the community of practice. So it's a really great resource and we've worked really hard to cu curate those materials um, for these projects. Next slide. Um, one of the um, innovations that came out of the first phase of the um, ISCI, uh, uh, particularly led by JD Smith, was the creation of this logic model um, and how to apply it for HIV implementation science. And that's all available on our website, but many of you who applied um, for um, year two projects um, included these logic models as part of your application. And we have a webinar on how to use the logic model that's available on our website. Next slide. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details about some of the metrics of the services we delivered in year one, because I wanna talk more about year two, but I just wanna pause and say that um, all of the slides that I'm presenting, as well as a recording of the webinar that you're watching now will be available on the ISCI website. So you can look at some of the services that we provided in the first year on this slide. Next slide. Some, one of the big changes from year one to year two is that there's fewer more diversified projects that were funded as part of year two. So there's 12 two-year projects that were projects that were funded in year one that are continuing into year two. Um, there's also 22 uh, new one-year projects. Um, and we have a new structure as part of um, the supports for the Ending the Epidemic Initiative. Uh, in year one, ISCI provided all the coaching and support to each of the projects, as well as the coordination across projects. And in year two, um, we've adapted that structure so that we now have five regional hubs um, that are providing coaching and support in um, collection of data um, across all of the funded projects. You'll be hearing from each of those hubs in a second. And that's allowed ISCI to um, shift our focus to more work on coordination. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a later slide. Next slide. Um, so these are the five um, implementation science hubs you're gonna be hearing from each of them in a second. So I um, just wanna introduce this concept that all of the projects um, filled out um, uh, descriptions of their types of projects. And we did a matchmaking process to identify the hubs that were best aligned with those particular projects and link them to those hubs. So all of the projects should now be collect connected to um, one of these implementation science hubs. All of the year two projects should be connected to one of these implementation hubs. Next slide. Um, so the hubs are gonna tell you a little bit uh, more about themselves in a second. As I said, um, each of the hubs has six to seven projects that they're supporting where they're providing tailored consultation to the projects throughout the year, as well as assisting in um, the collection of some of the shared measures that are being um, collected across each project. ISCI is going to continue to coordinate the data collection and the collection of progress report information across the projects. We continue to maintain the community of practice as well as send out a bi-weekly newsletter with information about um, developments in the field of HIV implementation science, the activities of the hubs, the projects, ISCI. Um, and we're continuing to host um, a national HIV implementation science webinar series. In this case, we're co-hosting it um, with the national CIFAR webinar series. 
Um, we're also doing um, systematic reviews of some real important questions around barriers and facilitators and strategies that are very particular to HIV um, that um, we want to sort of identify as best practices um, and then begin to identify what it means to have a best practice for an implementation strategy. Finally, I'll say that we're, um, host, we're editing a special issue of JADES uh, where the supplements as well as other HIV implementation projects have an opportunity to show, showcase their work. Next slide. And with that, I'll turn it over to Nanette, um, who's going to talk more about um, what we've learned from year one and year two projects. Hi, great. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Hello, all. Um, yeah, so I just want to tell you a little bit about um, kind of lessons learned and, and um, what uh, findings from year one. Um, as I, I think Brian mentioned, you know, year one projects, it was the first year of a planning of an implementation science planning grant and uh, uh, project year one grantees were tended to be uh, much more in the exploration phase of implementation, probably due to the fact that it was a planning grant and uh, tended to focus then more on identifying barriers and facilitators to implementation. Uh, the great majority of project PIs were uh, well-established and seasoned HIV researchers, uh, but few reported formal implementation science training. Uh, many reported that their projects were delayed as a result of COVID-19. We were probably in about, oh, a little bit less than halfway through the, the grant period. Uh, but despite COVID, they ultimately were able to achieve uh, at least some of their aims. And activities most impacted were participant recruitment and enrollment and collaboration with implementation partners who were of course all consumed addressing COVID. Um, projects would have benefited from focusing on implementation strategies and outcomes early on. I think there was there tended to be as we mentioned, many focused on barriers and facilitators, but what, you know, and identified strategies from that, but perhaps having a better sense of what implementation outcomes uh, it were they were interested in might have helped kind of uh, move along in the planning. Preliminary analysis of the data collected during year one suggests that participant participation and engagement with the ISCI three activities that Brian mentioned was associated with a greater chance of receiving funding for year two. And as Brian mentioned, we developed a lot of resources um, and for the community of practice, and you can find them here at this link. So I mentioned that, uh, you know, uh, many, almost half, about 70% of year one projects um, were examined barriers and facilitators to implementing their proposed interventions or strategies. Um, so we categorize those into the CIFR domains. And the most common barriers that they identified were patient needs and resources, cost, external policies and complexity um, among kind of the most common ones. Next. Um, the most common facilitators, as you can see, they identified many and kind of with, with very similar frequency. So I'll just highlight a couple um, of the facilitators were adaptability, relative, relative advantage, having champions and opinion leaders, knowledge of belief of the intervention, um, and uh, kind of among others. Next. Here is a similar map to the one that Brian presented. Um, again, you know, these are EHE funded jurisdictions. Um, we do see a slightly different mix in kind of the project pillars that were focused of, of this year's grants, and I'll describe that in just a minute. Next. So we see that the majority of the projects for year two uh, are focusing on the prevent pillar. Um, almost, uh, what is it, 70% 70, 70 of them. So a, a much larger proportion than, than uh, year one. And uh, many of them had a focus as was very common. Few tended to just focus on one, on one pillar. Um, and kind of the most common secondary focus was diagnose likely kind of identifying somebody, um, you know, uh, from HIV testing and then um, linking them to care, for instance. Next. Um, so 
you know, as I think we also mentioned that uh, I highlighted in the findings that project one um, uh, projects in year one tended to be uh, much more in the kind of in the exploration phase of the project. In year two, we see uh, a really big shift in that. Uh, so in year two, uh, people were much more likely to be in the preparation and implementation phase. 88% of the projects were in that phase compared to year one where only 49% were in preparation or implementation phase. And this is likely reflecting the fact that 12 of the year two projects are continuation of, of year one. Um, the most common intervention, so 70% of the, of, of the projects tended to focus on prevention, while the intervention that they focused on was PrEP. 63% um, of them are, are focusing on, on implementation of PrEP, followed by retention and re-engagement, linkage to care, uh, patient navigation, and HIV testing. Next. Uh, you know, the, the, as you all know, this, this funding announcement has a, a strong partnership, uh, sort of partner collaboration with uh, those funded for EHE projects by HRSA or CDC. Um, among the implementation partners, the majority tended to be CBOs, health departments, and FQHCs or community clinics, which also included health department clinics. Um, and oftentimes there was a variety of partners. So it could have been um, that, uh, the, you know, many of these interventions involve different partners and indeed the projects have uh, partners from a lot of different sectors. Next. And lastly, um, we, we asked uh, projects uh, what was, if they had a target population and if so, which one it was. And um, it, it, it's great to see that most of them do indeed have at least one target population as opposed to being, uh, you know, just something for all patients in care or, or um, general population. Um, the, the primary groups of focus uh, were Black and uh, Latinx communities, gay, bi, and other MSM, and cisgender women, among others. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to a showcase of our hubs. And we'll start first with the Mid-Atlantic CIFAR Consortium Plus. Thanks, Nanette. Hi, this is Sheree Schwartz. Uh, I'll be presenting along with uh, Steph Baral on behalf of the MAC IS hub. So our hub is uh, led by the Johns Hopkins University CIFAR. Uh, Steph and I lead it uh, along. Uh, we have a great team with Chris Hoffman, Laura Beres, Bhakti Hansoti, and Jill Ocharzak. And then we also have uh, leveraged collaborations from outside of Hopkins, including Patrick Sullivan from Emory and Elvin Gang, and, and some faculty there from the Center for Dissemination and Implementation at, at WashU. So it's really a, a nice collaboration of um, both people inside and outside of Hopkins. And we're also able to leverage some uh, alumni from our, our fellowship. Next slide. And so really what you see outlined here is that we have three focus, uh, three foci of our, of our hub, uh, methods, mentorship, and collaboration. And, and really we're, I think like all of the hubs trying to really promote best practice in terms of the, the rigor and the use of methods. And we're really trying to provide a tailored mentorship uh, to the awardees and to faculty that, um, that would like to engage with the hub, even if they're not an EHE awardee. We recognize that the faculty um, that are coming to us and, and coming for advice or conversations, that these really are conversations because many of the faculty are very senior. And, um, and so it's really about trying to help embed best practice, best practice methods and, and discussions of you know, how we can support and ideas that we may have to improve the implementation science in the research. And, and also just really trying to build collaborations, um, both with between the EHE awardees and, and our hub in, in, order, in order to build their um, network of IS researchers, but, but really across the CFARs as well, and just trying to, um, you know, 
help develop help further develop this you know community of practice in the IS space um, and, and and foster generalizable knowledge um, where we can. I'll pass over to Steph now. Great, thanks very much. So next slide, please. Indeed, um, I'm sure you could have presented this uh, masterfully, but um, but we're we're sharing. Uh, the responsibility. So, so I mean, we basically have like three key elements that we work on, uh, and and then I think we provide meaningful expertise around. So, one of them is is really about study designs, and I think what we really try to do here is ensure that like that the designs are really well aligned with the questions and the strategies being used, and and you know we have expertise whether it be experimental, observational, etc. And I think you know we have that within our core faculty, and we also have a, a broader community at Johns Hopkins outside of like you know purely implementation research, but that have a great expertise in the context of, of these particular methods. Um, in terms of frameworks, we really want to, first of all, overcome the general distaste that I think uh, many folks have about even using the term framework, uh, often in implementation research, and, and, and really try to in, ensure that folks understand the utility of these approaches and, and the utility of the frameworks and the works that, that other people have done uh, before them in terms of evaluation frameworks or planning frameworks or determinants frameworks, et cetera. And then we have a fair amount of expertise, uh, again, within uh, amongst the faculty and within the community about population specific work. And so we heard Nanette speak, you know, about some of the communities that have been kind of the focus of the different projects, but we've ensured that, you know, the, the vast majority of, of different uh, communities would be well represented uh, in the expertise of, of the faculty. Next slide. One minute warning is, is well taken, I won't need it. I just wanna say, our so our services are only focused on getting people funded or kind of understanding the trajectory of the work. A lot of these things are supplements, they're small grants intended to feed the large grants. Our only goal is even, you know, we recognize they're very experienced investigators often we're talking to and sometimes they're making a transition into implementation research, sometimes they're well established. Um, you know, our only job is to help folks get funded. And that means very different things for di different folks. And we really just try to adapt uh, according to what we really identify those needs are and, and then ensure that there's just a, a really clear pathway for the work so that it will result in better science and thus, I think, more support to do that science. So I don't, I, you know, we talk all, all day about the details that, for that, but I think that's the overarching goal. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Donna Spiegelman. Um, I'm the director of our Ready Hub. Ready stands for Rigorous, Rapid, and Relevant Evidence, which is kind of the goal essentially of implementation science is to generate such evidence, um, often through adaptation and implementation to end the AIDS epidemic. So uh, we came up with this name for our hub, Ready. And I am, here I am, and you can also see me right here. I'm the director of our hub. Um, I'm also the director of CIRA, Yale's Center for Impl Implementation Interdisciplinary Research on AIDS um, Center. Um, and I uh, have been leading the Interdisciplinary Research Methods Core for the past two plus years, which in some ways is very similar, plays a very similar role to what our hub does, uh, which we'll be talking about shortly. And I'm also the director of Yale Center for Methods and Implementation and Prevention Science, as well as uh, uh, several other um, roles that I have at Yale. Um, and uh, we've been able to assemble a really nice group of people um, to provide the support in our hub. Raul Hernandez Ramirez, who has a PhD in chronic disease epidemiology focused on AIDS. He's an expert quantitative analyst. Uh, Debbie Humphreys, who um, is on this call. I don't know if she might, I don't know if she's allowed to show her face and wave, but um, she's a longstanding um, researcher with uh, quite a bit of expertise in qualitative, quantitative, and community-based research, and also teaches um, at the Yale School of Public Health. Chris Simon, who um, has been, is our uh, designated qualitative analyst, has a doctorate in um, social epidemiology from the Harvard School of Public Health that did a postdoc 
here at Yale and then has moved on to join our group. And then we're supported administratively by William Toodle, who is um, the last person here um, on the far right. Next slide. So um, our approach to our hub as a consultation hub was to bring together a wide range of, um, of um, colleagues, most of whom are at Yale um, as, as the top group is, but we brought in a number from outside Yale as well to kind of fill in where we felt that we needed a little bit of strengthening. Our, our um, strength in general is quantitative methods, but it's by no means exclusive. And um, you can see here, I, maybe it's best if I don't um, read everybody's name, but we have a number of um, health services research experts. Uh, community-based research experts and uh, so on. And then we were also very happy to have been able to bring in by Brian Mittman, who is a very well-known implementation science scientist in the HIV arena, whose focus has been on the sort of theories, methods, and framework side. And then Rachel Nugent, who is our health economist. And then um, Inval Nahum Shanai, who's an expert in the smart design, we're able to support all sorts of study designs that come up, can come up in uh, somewhat later stages of the implementation science process. Step wedge designs, two-stage designs, smart designs, before-after designs, interrupted time series designs, and so forth. Next slide. Um, and um, so uh, similar to the first um, uh, hub that presented, our aim is to provide technical assistance, coaching, training, and consultative services. We were assigned seven projects and we've begun uh, working quite actively with them. The way we structured things was each one of the four of us is assigned to uh, between one and three projects, depending on the amount of effort each person has to give to our hub. And they're meeting at least monthly with their projects and advising on uh, a whole range of issues as they come up. One thing that's come up is um, people were very interested in uh, learning how and using rapid assessment methods for their qualitative data. And uh, we'll be giving a webinar on that. It'll be given by Ashley Hageman, who you saw in the earlier slide, and Elizabeth Rhodes. And then I know we're likely going to be offering such a thing in our April meeting. But um, we've decided that um, because people really want to get going with this, and some of them already have data, that we didn't think it made sense to wait until April. So we're going to give our first uh, webinar on that topic coming up right now. We've also gone through people's interview guides and made suggestions on how to improve and target their qualitative interviews and so forth. So, um, you know, hopefully the way we will contribute to ending the AIDS epidemic and implementation science is by uh, publications that might arise within our hub. In fact, we're already working on one on implementation science approaches to improving recruitment and retention in domestic HIV research for the new issue that is being led by some, um, I think by members of the ISCI hub. And um, we'll, we hope to collaborate on new grants with some of our projects and um, otherwise make ourselves useful. Wonderful, thanks so much. Um, my name is Nicole Stadnick and I, along with my uh, partner in coaching and consultation, Borja Karabin, are co-leading the San Diego CIFAR Implementation Science Hub. Um, I'll share a bit about the who of our hub and then uh, Borshika will share more about the what and the how. Uh, next slide, please. So the who, um, we structured our hub to um, provide specialized coaching to each of the projects. So each project has a coaching team that comprises both experts in implementation science um, experts in HIV research, and then consultants who have joint expertise in both implementation science and HIV research. 
So um, I'll just briefly uh, share those names with you so you can um, see who we have on our team. So for our implementation science coaches, we have uh, both uh, Borshika and myself from UC San Diego, uh, Greg Ahrens and Lauren brooklyn um, also from UCSD and, and co-directors, the four of us form our co-directorship of our UC San Diego Dissemination and Implementation Science Center. Um, we also have a, a focus on uh, training and, and building capacity of implementation science consultation and um, expertise. So we have uh, Dr. Jessica Montoya and Claire Billion, who are uh, junior implementation science coaches who are, being, who are part of these uh, project coaching teams. Um, our HIV coaches include Dr. Miley Karras and Laramie Smith, who are also active um, contributors and members to our local CIFAR. Um, Yordano Stastafi, um, who is uh, one of our uh, hub managers, and then our two HIV implementation science coaches, they bring expertise in mixed methods and obviously this joint expertise um, in both fields include uh, Katie Wilking and Sylvie Nahr. Next slide, please. So um, we just wanted to, we're just delighted to be able to formalize our partnership between our UC San Diego Dissemination and Implement Implementation Science Center and our San Diego CIFAR. We've been uh, working together for a few years and this uh, hub represents our formal partnership together, allowing us to leverage the resources, training and, and, and technical assistance activities through both of those centers. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Borshika to talk a little bit more about the, the what and the how. Thank you so much, Nicole, and hello, everyone. Uh, Nicole already uh, previewed that we are um, structuring our activities with this angle from IS expertise, HIV expertise, and then the overlap between the two. I'm not going to walk you through every single activity here, but I wanted to highlight some of the special expertise that we bring. We have been using the REAM and PRISM framework for the past several years and the EPIS framework, so we can bring uh, that expertise to the larger group. Um, we have expertise in operationalizing IS models in general. Uh, we are also um, um, have done quite a bit of work in the context of both domestic and global implementation of evidence-based practices in behavioral health and other types of contexts. Um, Partnerships between academic and community settings is another area that we are very interested in. And more recently, we have been developing some evaluation methods to measure the quality of those and figuring out whether stakeholder engagement happens in a meaningful way and thinking about creative approaches of tracking that. We also have contributed uh, in the past in different topic areas outside of HIV to measure development for implementation science, as well as thinking about adaptations harmonization of measures and uh, tailoring uh, for context. And then on the HIV side, uh, there is a lot of expertise in collaborative qualitative and quantitative as well as mixed methods research uh, for HIV interventions in development and evaluation, thinking about uh, implementation of HIV prevention and treatment programs, and uh, also more clinical and translational approaches. And then of course the intersection of these two show um, our interest in looking at multi-method, multi-level uh, HIV interventions and how we can implement those in communities. Next slide. And again, not to um, take in the full uh, logic model, uh, as we worked toward uh, developing our proposal, we thought a lot about the three main pillars that were identified by the ISKI and the RFA for the IS hubs. And those are very similar across these IS hubs, thinking about consultation and technical assistance. And Nicole already pointed out that we are um, trying to bring in this train the trainer approach. We are bringing in more early career folks and uh, training them in implementation science, as well as learning about HIV through our HIV expert. The second main component is thinking about uh, local knowledge and how we can make that generalizable. So we are very excited to contribute to the data harmonization, measure harmonization approaches, uh, working with this crosswalk that was developed by the ISKI and helping our projects implement that. And then finally, perhaps uh, most interesting for us uh, is to think about how we can gather information about the IS Hub activities in a way that we learn about their usefulness, continually improve our activities and services. And so we have been using multi-method approaches 
to gather information from the consultees, from our consultants and broader groups on a regular basis and track our consultations using um, a special software we call Clockify to know how much time we spend with each project and what kind of topics we discuss with them. So we look forward to bringing all of these to share with the larger group and work with all of you. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm Robin Lanzi. I um, am co-director of our um, UAB CIFAR Implementation Science Hub, uh, MUGS, or Dr. Michael Mogavero is on here as well, if he wants to show his screen and say hello. Um, I see he unmuted, so. Yeah, hey Robin, I'm here. I'm, I'm not able to share my screen, but I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Um, so um, Muggs and I are both thrilled to um, be working with the UAB CIFAR Implementation Science Hub. Um, Muggs is the co-director and clinical um, core director uh, for our CIFAR and um, has great expertise in implementation science. Um, he is a card carrying implementation science um, person as we um, all learned when we were at our training with the Northwestern group. Um, and I um, am a developmental psychologist with training in implementation science. And like the other hubs, we have investigators who are HIV content experts, those who are implementation science experts, and those who are a combination of them. So we are thrilled to have a cadre of implementation science um, experts on our team. Uh, Dr. Adia Rana, um, she is the UABC FAR ending. HIV in, the, in Alabama SWIG co-director. She's co-leader of the National Rapid Start Consortium and PI or co-I on numerous outcomes and effectiveness, hybrid and implementation science grants that are conducted across the Deep South region. Uh, Dr. Bertha Hidalgo is the UAB Clinical and Translational Science Training Program Director and has great expertise in communication and dissemination and implementation science, um, as well as epidemiology and health disparities, um, and really a growing um, area in uh, social media. And so we're really excited to have her as part of the team, as well as Dr. Larry Harold, um, who has great expertise, and he's one of our um, methodologists in terms of dissemination and implementation science. So we're thrilled to have him. Um, and then in terms of sort of our um, group centered around um, uh, database and informatics, as well as biostatistical support, we have Dr. Greer Burkholder, who is the UABC FAR Clinical Core Co-Director of Database and Informatics and has extensive experience providing coaching, consultation, and technical assistance to Ryan White Clinics, as well as ASOs and CDOs. And then, of course, Dr. Uh, Destin Long provides great expertise in terms of biostatistical support and Alfredo Guzman um, with database and informatics. And um, we are thrilled to have uh, Tom Krager, uh, Dr. Tom Krager and Kaylee Bergen who um, really support sort of um, research um, and areas of interest centering around program evaluation. And, um, and then Eddie Jackson, who is our Community Engagement Programs Manager um, for our UAB CIFAR and has um, decades of experience in that and brings a wealth of experience. And then we have our group of um, those who um, have qualitative experience and that's um, Claire Eastep, as well as um, Kalani Upshaw and our wonderful program coordinator. Okay, two minutes. So let me continue on to the next slide, please. Um, so we're thrilled with um, what we are able to do as a, a consultation hub, providing this unique geographical research, um, reach and leadership and participation in a number of inner CFR um, working groups, including the implementation science, HIV in the Southeast and the inner CFR faith and spirituality research collaborative, um, as well as providing methodological ex expertise in implementation science, study design, frameworks, measures, and outcomes, um, and uh, having great um, experience in community-engaged science and partnership formation, um, which we um, 
do in addition to these inter CIFAR working groups um, and been a number of our UAV CIFAR investigators have been instrumental in local state wide regional and national partnerships with non-academic Ryan White clinics, ASOs, CBOs, and faith communities, as well as local and state health departments. Um, and um, so we're excited about that. And next slide, please. And we, um, as like the other hubs, are um, have these established consulting teams specific for each project based on their areas of identified needs and um, content area and we are having quarterly meetings with all sites but also these individual meetings and are um, excited about our shared work with the other um, hubs and the ISKI um, leaders and um, are thankful to be part of the team. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Allison Hamilton, uh, rounding us out here with the remaining hub. Um, so I lead the UCLA Rapid Rigorous Relevant. You see we have some strong ties among the hubs with our areas of focus. Uh, that's the, the three R, UCLA three R implementation science hub. Um, the next slide please. So we're part of CHIPS led by Dr. Steve Shopta and i um, thrilled to have an amazing team working with me on this at UCLA, uh, working with Drs. Norita Milburn, Chung Ching Lin, and Jay Lee. Um, all of them have strong implementation science backgrounds and amazing project directors, um, Elena Rosenberg Carlson and Wen Cao. And then uh, we are also supported by five very strong implementation science experts. Dr. Zana Bauman, Matt Chinman, Jeff Curran, Aaron Finley, and Russ Glasgow. Um, so we're already having a lot of fun with this team, as you might imagine. Uh, next slide, please. So um, like the other hubs, we have our awardees that we are supporting, uh, the seven folks um, noted here and doing a wide range of work in their EHE projects. Next slide, please. Uh, so very similar to the other hubs, um, we're providing uh, a range of training and coaching technical assistance um, support for the EHE grantees. We're really focused on methods, um, especially methods that address the effort to be rapid, rigorous, and relevant. And there are a few more R's that Dr. Glasgow has added since then. Um, across our team, um, we have pretty wide range of methods, expertise, as well as experience uh, doing community-based implementation research, uh, particularly re related to HIV. Um, of course, we're um, extremely happy to be collaborating with the coordinating center and with the other hubs so that we're coming together to advance the implementation pipeline and uh, just really increase the multidisciplinary collaboration going on in HIV-related implementation research. Next slide. Um, so for our awardees specifically, we provide um, tailored and modular implementation science training. So we have been uh, working with them to understand where their strengths are and where their areas of need are, and then tailoring the training based on that and providing that in addition to consultation and coaching. Um, we're gonna be doing some expert roundtable feedback that focuses on grant writing. As several of the hubs have mentioned, one of our goals is to you know, really support these awardees in, in getting additional funding in HIV. Um, we have a lecture series, which we're very excited about, and I hope you all received information about it because our first session is on Thursday, this Thursday at New Pacific with Erin Finley, who's my close colleague, another fellow anthropologist, She's gonna be talking about behavior design, and then we'll have uh, one beachside chat per month for the, the remainder, four more, four more months, with each of the consultants talking about cutting edge topics and issues in implementation science. So if you need information about that, please do let me know or let us, you know, they have the information as well. And then of course, as with the other hubs, we're engaged in 
uh, consistent evaluation, collaboration, and making contributions to ISCI. Next slide, please. So if you need any more information, please feel free to contact us. We look forward to hearing from you and helping in any way we can. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Dennis Lee and I'm part of the ISCI team. I'm going to step in and, and serve as moderator for this last portion of today's talk. Um, uh, if anyone has any questions, you feel free to type them into the Q&A as some folks have already been doing. Um, you can also use um, the raise hand function somewhere, uh, I think. Uh, and um, Brennan will unmute you so you can ask your question directly. Um, the first question is, will this webinar be posted soon? Uh, we will try to turn it around uh, shortly and get it up on the ISCI website, um, probably within a couple days. Hey, Dennis, this is Muggs. As we're waiting for questions to come in, I was wondering if you might share a little bit about the measures crosswalk. I think it's been a great exercise it was really nice sharing the logic model that JD and others developed, but I wonder if you might just share a little bit about the IS measures crosswalk effort. Sure. Um, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, so one of the activities is kind of what Brian, uh, what, what Brian had mentioned early on is this in the second year we're focusing, ISCI Central is focusing a little bit more on the, um, the uh, harmonization of measures. And one of our first things that we tackled was uh, implementation outcomes, trying to get projects to um, select and operationalize um, implementation outcomes in the same way. And so through a series of meetings with last year's projects, uh, meetings with uh, implementation science, HIV experts, um, CDC and HRSA uh, folks, we developed a large, what we were calling a crosswalk, but is essentially a giant spreadsheet of um, implementation outcomes that we think are important for HIV research and um, recommended ways of operationalizing those outcomes. And I think a key feature of this crosswalk is that we've also broken out these outcomes by stage of research. So projects that are in implementation preparation, maybe they're exploring barriers and facilitators, or perhaps um, just starting to select strategies, uh, don't need to measure all of the outcomes that, that we think of for implementation. Similarly, those that are piloting will have slightly, di slightly different operationalizations than projects that are taking something to scale. And so we have, um, we have worked with the hubs to you know, start disseminating this uh, crosswalk to the projects. Um, we are um, working on a publication or a manuscript for, for the crosswalk as well. And we're also happy to um, share it with folks who are interested in some of this kind of guidance around implementation outcomes, operationalization. Um, hopefully within the next year, we'll, that part of our community practice will also be public. Muggs, did I answer what you wanted to get at about the crosswalk? Oh, was perfect. No, thank you for sharing. I think it's been a tremendous endeavor and your leadership has been greatly appreciated. So thank you for that nice synopsis and summary. And Dennis, do you wanna also, should we post the link to the webinar um, uh, on the implementation outcomes crosswalk? Yes. Um, we can post that into Q and A feature. Let me look for that.
Any other questions? You can type questions into the Q&A um, at the bottom. We've got time for probably one more. So a question came in, um, I'm just gonna feel that Dennis, cause it looks like you're typing um, about um, that uh, some of the awardees have been experienced investigators, what opportunities exist for new investigators. And I actually think that the mix of the supplement awardees, um, I don't know if you were talking specifically about the awardees for supplements or for the hubs, uh, but I think the, the, the projects, the supplements are actually a mixed a mixture of newer and more experienced investigators. Um, uh, for those that, for new investigators that are not affiliated with a hub, opportunity to learn more about implementation science. And I think, um, Sheree, if you want to talk a little bit about the, um, the, the training institute that you've stood up, uh, I think that would be a really great opportunity to tell more about that. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Um, this is our second year uh, running a a fellowship for early stage investigators uh, in HIV in which we've there's been an application process and, um, you know, and this year 24 fellows were selected and they go through uh, a multi-month series of didactic uh, sessions, which are really intended to give both the introduction to implementation science uh, with a focus entirely on HIV, uh, but then also you know, we're trying to get uh, more into the weeds. And so we also have these weekly uh, interactive sessions with uh, core faculty. We're really, you know, across the different CFARs, um, leveraging, you know, the inter-CFAR um, IS working group. And uh, we really, it's, it's focused on a grant. So we ask that um, when, when ESIs apply, that they have a grant in mind. And really it's, it's their, um, the mission is to help support uh, the development of IS focused grants. And so that's really, we have assignments and um, accountability with a, a paired mentor that's really focused on moving that grant forward. And, you know, last year we had uh, 27 fellows and I think, um, I think we had 12 awards funded so far, maybe 13 um, so far from those 27. So I think it's, it's been so far a successful first year and we're in the midst of our second year. So hopefully we will uh, have the ability to continue uh, in the future. And those applications are usually due around um, September or so. I don't, I don't know if there's anything else that, that um, you wanted me to mention, Brian. I know that we don't, at the moment we don't have, you know, it, it really is part of the application process, but um, certainly if, if there are resources and reading lists that people are interested in, we're also happy to um, link them to those. That's great, Sheree, thank you. And um, as I said, a lot of the resources from um, these various initiatives that we've mentioned are both on the Third Coast um, CIFAR website, as well as the ISCI website. So um, feel free to avail yourself of those. And we try to post about training opportunities. There's actually a section on the inter-CIFAR website that includes um, opportunities to participate in different types of um, IS training programs. So that's good to check out as well. Okay, should we wrap it up, Brian? Yeah, sounds good. Thanks um, everyone for attending and uh, for hosting us, Ron, uh, and to all the hubs and speakers for so efficiently um, sharing so much information. Uh, uh, and uh, thanks to everyone who joined us. Yep. So thank you, thank Brian, you. and all of the, the speakers for their presentations. It was a really an inform, information rich session. Um, and we wish you all well in, in this, this really important endeavor. So next February, we'll have another webinar and it will be focused on a special Lancet issue that's being put together on HIV in the USA and our UNC Coast CFAR director, Ada Adamora is, is uh, putting that together and working with the Emory CFAR. So we will send that information out uh, towards the end of February and hopefully we'll see many of you again there. Bye-bye.